any of you see the articles recently on the New, in the New York Times about? I read an article last week on Monday, and it was about. The so I use the Times in a number of different ways in the classroom. They're required to use it as a textbook. They have to read two novels, a textbook, and the New York Times, and that's what the requirement is. And then what they must do is, in the discussion sections, they have to present the material on an article in which they present what they learned from the article and then tying it to a sociological theory or concept so that they understand the material of sociology but as it's relevant to a day-to-day -day experience. So they really learn that sociology is real world and not just an abstract concept or theory. Almost every day there would be uh, what I counted up to be about an average of seven stories a day that had to do with religion one way or another. And that was not even using a very broad defini <laughs> definition of religion, which I do use. Um, and I thought, started thinking, well, I can probably count on this continuing. So I'm going to try teaching a course called Religion and the Times, where we combine looking at the paper on a daily basis and seeing what the major stories are that have to do with religion, and um, looking at some theoretical resources to help us understand what's going on. Using the New York Times in a course like international politics, that's a natural fit. You can actually teach international politics effectively without, you know, a global newspaper like the Times. Uh, the project that I do with students is I assign each student the responsibility to choose four articles from the New York Times and to summarize them in a paragraph and then to list questions. Then they come to class and each student takes a turn at facilitating a discussion based on the article he or she has read. The students have to bring in an article and come with questions as well and we prefer open-ended questions so we can get many different perspectives from the whole class. They ask the whole class questions. As a TA we don't answer any of the questions so they have to talk about it. So I mean it's a good perspective because when you're reading the New York Times or reading anything as an individual you have your own perspective on it but when you're in class it's kind of nice because you get many different perspectives on it so you, you're like really dissecting each article. The way we use the times most of the time is that I ask on Tuesday I ask for volunteers to present prepare and present articles from the times this week on Thursday and so they'll come in with an article they want to talk about they've highlighted it they've uh, thought about what they want to talk about about it and they'll present it, sometimes they'll read the whole thing or part of the article, and uh, then we engage in a discussion about it. I had them read the front section primarily in global news issues class, for example, and, and also a news class. But in introductory journalism, it's great for them to grab onto something that they know or that they like. And so it's well worth it to show them the food section or the, the dining out section or the wine section and that kind of thing. And a lot of them have that kind of interest. And so we do use the whole paper. Uh, we have a program on campus that has become very successful. We call it Times Talk. And it brings students, faculty, and staff together every Wednesday for a discussion of a particular current event. Uh, a professor will uh, sign up to facilitate for the day, choose a, a particular article, and we will distribute that to the students and the faculty, and they'll come together and talk about it. I find it a really invaluable source for discussion, for illustration of theory, for looking at how history affects the present, and for stimulating uh, thinking about the future.